There you go. So that is the big question to host or not to host. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the man who led this research and this study. Please welcome Professor Sasha Schmidt. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's right after lunch, and that is the prime time for research. <laughs> I feel the same. No, we always had supporters, great supporters and opponents of Olympic Games. We have seen it in, uh, in the video. And, but something has changed. And uh, we heard a lot about change yesterday from, from Thomas Bach. And we heard a lot about the impact of digitalization on our society. Some, something is different. And you have seen our students here on stage. So these are digital natives. And you know these guys, our good old days as a professor are over. Yeah? If you have looked at them, they are confident, they are smart, they are demanding, but nobody told us how to deal with them. And it's not only us, so it's not only my daily life in the, in the classroom, it's also at home. So I have three boys, and the oldest one is 10 years old, and if I really want to effectively communicate with him, while we are sitting on the lunch or dinner table, I just sent him a WhatsApp message, and that works. So, these digital natives, they are always on. They are interconnected. They are media channels themselves, and so they also want to have a say in who is hosting the Olympic Games. And in these new digital realities, a small wind can turn into a storm immediately. And you can ask the, the mayor of uh, the city of Boston, uh, who experienced that quite recently, um, by a little bit underestimating the mobilization um, capabilities of the opponents. And so this is what he said. The opposition, for most part, is about 10 people on Twitter. And we have seen within minutes that these have been much more than 10 people on Twitter, and we all know how the story ended. So here really a small wind turned into a storm immediately. The question now is, so, and we have seen in the film all the, the, the bits who have been rejected, so is it really true that nobody wants to host the Olympics anymore? Yeah, is, it, is it true um, that, that this Boston incident is representative for, uh, for other cities? And that was a question that was also interesting to the Camp Beckenbauer board, who asked us to do a survey, a survey that is transnational, has a transnational perspective, and is independent. And we wanted to go beyond referendums and, and market research. So what did we do? So with the support of Repucom, we set up a study in 12 countries. 11 European countries plus the US, and uh, surveyed 12,000 people overall. This is representative for more than 700 mil million people. And we wanted not only to simply ask for, uh, do you want the games or do you don't want the games, we wanted to understand, we want to get a profile of the people. So we are asking for, um, psycho or we, we included psychological tests in there. We were asking about optimism, life satisfaction, but also got details on their income, their education level, and so on. And then with this massive data that we got, we wanted to do, uh, achieve two things. Number one, we wanted to have a transnational big picture. And second, we uh, wanted to um, derive practical implications, especially for campaigning and mobilization. And as you have seen, this turned out into this little report, and I guess that you didn't have a chance to escape, because I, uh, we put it everywhere. Uh, I, uh, yesterday, I talked to a participant. He even told me that he was turning around um, at night and found in his bed this study. So it was placed there by me. And uh, so, so I'm sure that you all have read the report, annoyed by heart. But please let me just to touch on, on two or three things 
that we found of particular interest. So, of course, the, the big question is, like, who is really supporting the, the games, who is against the games? And this um, for uh, more than 700 million people. So, the answer that we got was the following. The answer is yes. So, the majority is supporting the Olympic Games. And in 11 out of 12 countries, the supporters were outweighing the opponents. Only in Norway, we, had, we found a different picture. So who is against it? 25%, so one quarter. And if you simply do the math, you see it doesn't sum up to 100%. And this was one of the big differences of our study, because we looked at the middle ground. And there's the middle ground of the so-called undecided people. And these undecided people, this is a massive segment. So we are talking about 130 million people above 14 years. And so if you look at the three groups, and if you think about campaigning and mobilization, there are also different uh, strategies that turned out of our research that would be useful. So if you are in favor to host the games, You have the supporters, they are convinced. You don't need to convince them more. It's a question of mobilization. Because we have seen that, especially the young generation, they are fans of the Olympic Games, but they are not fans of the ballot box. And so it's, it's about to get them to vote. Opponents, here the question is, should we really invest in to, to turn the opponents over? And I can tell you, based on our data, this is a difficult task. 41% doesn't even listen to any arguments uh, that are pro-Olympia. So here, it's rather about demobilization, because many of them are not really activists. It's more about to integrate them into communication and not to provoke them. And now we have the middle part, the undecided. And we were really curious to see who are these guys. So, are these the rich or the poor? Are these uh, the, the beauty or the ugly? Are these the, uh, the young or the old? And I have to disappoint you. These are the ordinary people. And so, statistically, we try to find out what are really, what, what is uh, the criteria that is uh, kind of common among these undecided. And we uh, got five points. So, as I said, these are everyday people. They are often female. The majority is female. Um, at least in Europe, they are less educated than uh, in other parts of the world. And that's interesting, they are quite time-constrained. So, they don't have time. And they don't take any time to get information about the Olympics. And also, they don't invest time to, uh, to watch sports on, on uh, different media channels. Yeah? And the time constraints also explains that they are less active in organizations. So the question is, like, how, how can you get um, the undecided? And uh, there, there's a good benchmark coming from Obama's presidential campaign um, in, in uh, 2012, and they basically did three things. Number one, they, they applied easy-to-understand messages easy to understand messages, they tailored them to women, and they massively used uh, micro-targeting. So really to get into sub and sub and subgroups, and to really tailor the messaging towards them. And if you believe that the undecisive, the undecided might decide who is hosting the Olympics, then it's of value to understand who they are and how they think. But more details, you have the report, and uh, yeah, I think we, we, we got some questions. Or, or do we have questions? Mike, I have one. Okay, great. Just a couple of things we wanted to pick up on, and perhaps you could just explain a little bit further. You talked about the undecided, uh, whether you know, these people that aren't quite sure, do they want their country to host an Olympic Games or not? How do you go about trying to convince those people, though, if you were to do that? Um, yeah, so if you look in the, in the data, what is important for them in, in, in terms of Olympics? So it's, it's the top three things are no's. 
So they don't want any extra burden on the local population, they don't want tax money to be spent, and they don't want any environmental damages. And interestingly enough, these are also the top three points of the opponents. So it's really about uh, providing information, uh, convincing them, um, establishing boards, um, independent boards that advise, um, establishing stars that are uh, kind of meaningful. So, so that would be a way to address their issues and concerns. What kind of margins are we talking about that you could get a turnaround in that opinion, though? Is it worth spending the time and the money and the energy trying to convince those people or leave them to it? Yeah, as I said, this is a, um, it's a, an up, uphill battle because the, um, the opponents, they are, what we found out is that uh, in their environment, in their social environment, um, they are really, um, uh, or the social environment is really against the games. So it's very hard to get them out of it and to convince them. So as I said, it's more to, um, yeah, to integrate them into communication and uh, they are not too much interested in the topic. So, so 68% of uh, um, the surveyed people said that um, the hosting question is not really important for them. Okay, wonderful. It's been really interesting. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Sasha Schmidt. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.